I don't know if you can hear me though. Seems so. I don't know if they can no, hear. Okay. okay, it's perfect, so it's good. You should be muted for those. I'm, I should be muted, yeah, I, I am, so it's fine. Okay, so. Yeah, okay, it's fine. So, okay, it's nice to see all these friends again after these two years. So, it's been a long time, we try, so that we think we can thank Adio, Andrea, and Ernst for the endurance mm -hmm. to, to endure and keep these two years and trying and not bail in and then stop the conference. So it's nice to see all, all of you together and be here together. So we're gonna, gonna try to present a bit what we are currently doing on this uh, field of uh, fluids and solid interaction and friction. And most particularly what we are really doing lately on uh, interaction between fluid and electrons, sorry, fluid molecules and the fluids and the electrons and the solid, in particular in carbon nanomaterial that are easier to understand and probably also easier to, to, to measure. And we're gonna try to um, uh, describe what this interaction can imply in terms of uh, uh, transport of fluids in this, um, in this material. So basically on the, the effect and the impact of this fluid electron interaction on the fluid solid friction. And on the other way, so also how we can in certain way use fluid solid interaction to create uh, um, electronic current in, uh, in solid materials. It's gonna be basically divided in two parts that we're gonna follow this, uh, this idea or see how this fluid interac electron interaction can play this uh, uh, dual role. And in the first part, it's gonna be very fast. It's just basically recall uh, what we know about fluid transfer in carbon nanomaterials, in particular fluid solid interaction in carbon nanomaterials, and how we can in a certain way revisit these results in view of this fluid electron interaction. So basically everything started in 2009 when, uh, um, just again, very fast, when measurement on membranes made of uh, billions of carbon nano to show a very large uh, water permeability. So with water flowing at a speed that was order of magnitude larger than what expected or what predicted by standard aerodynamics. Since then, the result has been performed on any kind of uh, carbon materials, being graphene, graphene, graphite even, or more recently, uh, oxide, graphene oxide. So different materials, all based on carbon, and all of them have this uh, common behavior that present a very, very large permeability. So basically a very large flow and very large speed of water. That is, in a certain way, uh, can, can look like a sort of... Uh, consequence of a very low um, friction for water and for, for liquids at the solid, at the interface with the solids. So if we keep in mind this uh, standard way of understanding permeability enhancement or permeability in, uh, in, uh, in nanofluidic devices, the best way to try to rationalize the result is basically introduce a no-slip uh, boundary condition for flow. And this is mathematically just the idea of introducing this uh, B parameter in the Navier-Stokes Navier equation and then in the boundary condition for the Navier-Stokes equation, where we know that B is a slip length that is basically uh, the inverse of the friction coefficient for uh, at the fluid soil interface. So if you introduce this uh, parameter, you immediately have an enhancement of permeability that is uh, depending on this B parameter in, uh, divided by the radius or the confinement. So it is clearly here shown already that Going small in, this, in size is uh, helping because it's going to be more and more for the same slip length or for the same kind of friction, you will have a more measurable effect if you go to a slow, to slow, sorry, at low dimensions. So if we keep now use this and we try to be a bit more quantitative, for example, for the case of, uh, um, try to, And we, we try to be a bit more uh, um, quantitative, for example, for the case of, uh, of carbon nanotubes. So we can basically extract the permeability, compare this to the permeability or the, um, uh, 
the flow for the for the water compared to the standard aerodynamic, and then we get from this enhancement factor using this, the format that we showed before, we can extract a sort of a slip length. And in the case of the nanotube, the first result were basically all in the order of hundreds of nanometer up to uh, microns, so very large value compared to, uh, for example, the radius. And even more important, this value were always one two or, uh, or one of two order of magnitude larger than the best case that we could observe experimentally on other standard material, like for example, uh, coded material like uh, hydrophilic or hydrophobic material. So it looks like for real carbon is uh, something special. And that was the, the, the starting point. So the, the, the first part that we did, and it was very, very fast, was to try to reproduce this result in uh, more control and configuration in order to be able to compare to, to, to a theoretical modeling that was, in a certain way, more easy to, to apply. So what we did was basically um, try to do the experiment on an individual nanotube, so in this case carbon nanotube or boronite, but we focus, for example, for, for the moment on the carbon. So we introduced a carbon nanotube at the end of a, of a glass capillary, and we used this technique with this device to measure the flow induced by a pressure applied to uh, one extremity of the nanotube. And basically, we were able to, to measure the velocity of, the, of a bath of colloid that were at the ex other extremity of the nanotubes. And from this, with this technique, we, we showed that we had enough sensitivity to detect the the flow coming from an individual nanotubes. So experiments have been performed, of course, to be quantitative in order in, by changing the parameter, for example, the pressure. So we were able to, to basically uh, perform this experiment for pressure increasing from uh, 0 0.5 bar up to 1.7 bar. And we, uh, again, we collected this, the velocity of the, of the colloid, or basically we, we analyzed the colloid trajectories and from that, we were able to extract the, the velocity of these collo colloids and finally the, the flow streamlines. And from this streamlines, we were finally able to obtain directly the, the nanotube permeability. So from this, we were able then to compare this. We performed this experiment and compared to the, to the reference. It was a standard aerodynamic. We performed this for a different nanotube. This here in green, carbon nanotube, and in uh, blue, the boronitrate. And we did this for um, increasing, for, for changing of various radius. And we observe all the time this, uh, this behavior with um, an increasing enhancement for carbon nanotube while you go down to small radius. And from this, we were able then to extract the slip length. And we observed that in the case of uh, boronite, that basically there was no slip. And in the case of, um, the, of, of carbon nanotube, the slip length was very important, depending on the, on the, of course, on the radius and going up to several hundreds of nanometers for our smaller nanometer, that was 50 nanometers. And then we try to compare this with the, the, with the, with the standard theory, basically based on the molecular dynamic simulation based on standard I mean, commensurability effect and how water can interact. And this is was basically the theory based on this molecular, well, the result of simulation that at the first side looks quite in agreement, at least in the terms, in the values. We obtain for small nanotubes the large slip length in the order of a few hundreds of nanometers, and that look at the first time quite good. But actually, if you look more into the, in the details and a bit more carefully, you realize that the theory is completely wrong with this experiment, and especially in the X uh, axis, where you look at the radius. So basically, for the theory, if you just consider commensurability effect, you would expect to have this enhancement of the, of the slip length just for um, radius that are in the order of few nanometers. While we observe this, this enhancement already at uh, 20, 30, even 40 nanometers. So this was clearly a, a gap between what we observed and, uh, and what the theory seems to suggest. And then, of course, what was important to understand is that first thing is that maybe our experiments are wrong in a certain way, so it's not excused. But then we compare to what was observed also in other group, and we realize that basically everything is, uh, is more or less the same. The experimental result that you have in literature is always showing very small slip length for graphene or, or uh, very large nanotubes. But you start to observe immediately an increasing of this uh, uh, permeability and increasing of the slip length for relatively large nanotubes in the order of uh, 30 nanometer radius. And that is goes very high even for when, when you're going for. 
So we had to, to go a bit further with the theory, and that was what has been performed by Nikita Havok in, last, in the next year in our group. And the idea was to look to other channel of dissipation and basically start to look with uh, a sense of non-classical uh, fluid solid friction, and in particular start to understand if there would be possible to have an interplay between the fluid transport and the electronic property of the materials. We observed here, for example, before there was a very big difference also between carbon nanotube and boron nitrate. That are basically it's the same apart from the fact that they are one insulator and another metallic or semi-metallic. So the idea was, is it possible to introduce or to take into account explicitly the, 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 the role of the electronic property of the materials? And then that was Nikita developed, and I suggest to look at this paper to have more details on the, on the very nice and the big effort he has done. So basically was to introduce this, taking the explicit in account this electronic effect in the fluid solid interaction that is basically this friction force that I show here. But what is important that if you look here, basically just in the, we can look very easily what this formula says is that this electron, fluid electron uh, interaction, so basically interaction between the fluid and the electron, is supposed to be important only when the collective excitation that are basically the, uh, given by this imaginative part of response function for the electrons and for those of the fluid meet or are in the same region. So if you are in a configuration where these two uh, collective excitation can meet, you expect to have a very strong fluid solid interaction and finally a large fluid solid friction. But if you are not, you expect to have basically low friction. So if you look first is that in general we don't expect to meet because it's, it's always the same. Electrons are high energy and molecules and fluids are low energy. This is uh, standard. So basically it's comparing KBT that is Mm, few million, tens of milli electron volt with uh, the, the electronic excitation plus basically plasma and so on that are more in the electron volt. But there are actually some materials that is, that is not like, like this. There are some cases where you have uh, the these two excitation can meet. And this is particularly the case of carbon materials. So if you look, for example, on this, uh, um, no, sorry. On this uh, center graph, you look at the, here, we uh, compare basically the the let's say the collective excitation for electrons or basically the electric response for graphene and for graphite. So graphene is basically characterized by a response with only very few modes that are the right energy to meet and to interact with the with the with the fluid molecules in the in the water. But on the other hand, graphite is more characterized is the, the dot in the in the center graph are more it's more characterized by sort of a dispersionless uh, response where there are a lot of modes exactly at the right energy. So they can meet and interact quite efficiently and effectively with the, with the waters. So and then if you put this, just for this point of view, you can then expect that in the case of graphene, you have a larger, a slower, a lower friction than in the case of graphite. So then you can then, let's say, generalize this, um, uh, this result and goes to the case of more like, for example, carbon nanotube that was interesting, then consider what is the response of carbon nanotubes from an electronic point of view and also from an optical point of view. And then you, you observe that when you go down at the small, um, as when you decrease the, the, the radius, you change the properties of the nanotube. And then if you put this in this formula, you extract this nice curve that Nikita obtained, where you observe that uh, this slip length or the friction dramatically change already a large, a large radius. So this is the, the three curves are a theoretical um, model that compares very well with, uh, with, uh, with our results. And basically it says that if it's more, it's more radius, commensurability plays the major effect. So the standard friction is the, what uh, is uh, playing a major role. When you go into intermediate, you are entering in a region where non-classical friction is, uh, is the key ingredient. So, and a, a part of this, what is interesting is that also this offers another new way to, to, to tune a bit the friction between a fluid and a solid, but also open a new way or can give us the, the hope of us to do the opposite way. So if we see how electrons can modify the fluid flow, because basically this is what's happening, we can also expect or hope that we can, in a certain way, use fluid to modify the electron electronic response. And this is basically this, the second part, is the phonon, how we can measure or show the phonon drug or basically the, the movement of, or the generation of current because induced by a phonon drug at the fluid solid interface. And this eco experimental evidence has been presented in a few, I mean, already some, some years ago. 
So basically, what was shown that the flow of uh, fluid along carbon nanomaterial were able to generate current or electronic potential. So the first result was in 2003 by Gosh et al, where they observed that the flow of fluid at the exterior of a uh, of, uh, bundle of nanotube was observed to generate a voltage drop between the two sides. The origin of this has been, for example, uh, I don't know that uh, you, you have done a lot of uh, thought about uh, thinking about what was the origin and this logarithmic dependency show, I mean, suggests quite immediately a sort of a stick slip uh, phenomenon. Lately, in 2014, another experiment was being proposed where there was a movement of a, graph of a drop of salty water on the top of microscopic salty water on top of graphene and they observe again the generation of a current in phase with the movement. And here their mechanism was completely different, was a sort of a change of capacitance between because of a change of the shape. And finally, two, only two years ago, it was been observed some, another very nice experiment where a flow of ions induced by a voltage drop inside the nanotube were observed to generate a, a voltage drop at the extremity, at the exterior of this nanotube. All of this seems to suggest the same thing that we're saying, but so basically how this fluid friction can generate electrons, but the mechanism exactly at place is still uh, a bit confusing. So what we decided to try to was to do again, again another con a sort of control experiment. In our case, what we used was, an, again, our tuning for base atomic force micros, but in this case, we didn't use an, F an AFM at all. We just used it as a sort of uh, object to controlling, to con I mean, control for a controlled deposition of a small amount of liquid. In this case, we have uh, touch um, a pipe at the extremity, we fill it with the liquids, ionic liquids, so charged liquids, and neutral uh, uh, polar liquid. And we, we put this, we deposit this on top of, uh, of, the, of a graphene sample, connected with two electrodes. The electrodes are connected on top, are, uh, on top of the substrate, so, sorry, of the graphene, sorry, so right on the, let's say, interface that touches the, 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 the liquid. So the liquid can be moved and displaced by, by the tip by applying a moving or movement on the on the on the on the, on the tuning fork. And the, the control the, the contact and the interaction is controlled by basically measuring the frequency shift. So as I was saying the, the, the flow the, 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 the drop is put in the displacement by the, the electrons and in the same time we measure the, the current that is generated. On, uh, between, uh, recorded between the two electrons, and then this generated by this movement. We perform experiments, as I said, on two different liquids, ionic charge and uh, uh, polar neutral uh, silicon oil, and on the diff very large different kind of samples, changing of the thickness from one nanometer up to 70 nanometers, but also was important with two completely different surface states. One very rough with a lot of wrinkles and uh, and uh, false, and one at basic atomic flux. And what we show here is that all the time we have observed, here we're comparing, for example, in black the wrinkle and in red the, the flat, that if you compare uh, samples with exactly the same, uh, pro I mean, everything is similar, so electronic property the same, and uh, thickness the same, size the same, everything the same, but just one very wrinkle and another where the very flat, the difference is that in the wrinkle you observe a current, and in the flat you observe always nothing. So we go a bit, a bit farther, and we start to perform experiment, and this time as a function of the velocity. So in this case, we perform this experiment on four different samples with the high density of wrinkle. And all the time we observe that this velocity is linear, sorry, that the current is linear with the velocity. So this suggests that the six slip may not apply in this sense. And also, what we observed here is that we were able to, to show that this conductivity was directly related to the corrugation, so the number of wrinkles and the height of the wrinkles. So, and we performed this experiment again, for liquid, ionic, and non-neutral results were always the same. So there were basically two options for us to, to look was One was the Coulomb drug, so the direct generation of uh, electrons movement because of Coulomb economic interaction, or the phonon drugs. So basically, the idea of that, one, you have a direct Coulomb interaction that generates, and the second is more like collision, of water molecules, and then finally friction of fluid molecules that uh, 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 with, the, with the solid. So this, the fluid is basically transferring momentum to the to the to the solid, and then this uh, momentum transfer generates phonons, and then because of the electron phonon interaction, you have a second of cascade effect on the on the 
and the generation of electrons. So basically, the idea is uh, more precise is that you have either, this can be generalized for every kind, kind of liquids, but uh, okay, you can apply, for example, in the case of ionic or neutral, and put the numbers there, and you immediately rule out the, the Coulombic interaction. Neutral and non-neutral effect would have, sorry, neutral liquid and, uh, and uh, charged liquid would have, a, would have expect to have very different behavior, and we observe exactly the same. Also, we do not, we do not expect to have many differences with, with the presence of wrinkles, so that was uh, helping to rule out the, the, the Coulomb drag. So what, have, what stays there and that looks to, 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 I mean, to investigate more was basically the phonon drag. So the idea here is quite exactly the same. So just to have a sort of uh, a cartoon uh, picture is that, okay, we have a liquid. This liquid is put in motion. And this motion, basically, the liquid interacts with the, with, the, with the solid because just basically of uh, viscous force and because of this uh, uh, friction at the wall. So this friction, basically, if uh, the friction force between the fluid and the, and the, and the um, and the solid basically is translating in generation of phonons, and these phonons has also um, an energy shift that is given by the fact that so the, the population is uh, is shifted by the fact that you apply this uh, constant flux of mo of uh, of momentum because of the fluid of uh, of the motion of the fluid, and then at the end you have uh, yeah exactly a shift of this population that is uh, if we look for example in the case of. Uh, uh, if I apply, I assume that the movement of the liquid is on the right, it basically is uh, changing, and there is a free shift on the right band of the of this uh, yeah, of the energy of the energy band. And then this is uh, uh, basically because of scattering of electron in uh, with the, with, the, with the crystal. This shift in the phonons and this generation of phonon wind is translated in uh, a generation of electronic uh, movement. That is, of course, that is, takes the same velocity in a certain way of the effective velocity. Of the of the electrons, and so if you go with a bit more on details, and that's been uh, uh, developed by Baptiste uh, Coquino and uh, again Nikita in full details, you can get, uh, have a rough estimation of the current you expect. So here is the current density, but it's more or less the same. And what you observe is that okay, the electronic current is basically the number of uh, charge, uh, basically is the charge carrier velocity times the number of charge carriers. So the charge carrier velocity in this case is assumed to be the, the the Fermi velocity, and the, the, the number of charge carrier, that what matters is basically given by the density of states and the induced frequency shift that what we observed is given by this fluid solid interaction, generation of phonons, and Umklub uh, uh, relaxation that goes to the, to this, uh, to that, to, to, to the frequency shift in the, in this, and then in change in the population. We can go very, very going into to the details and then try to estimate properly this uh, effective velocity and then finally the induced frequency shift. And then you observe that it's basically the effective velocity of the phonon wind is only determined by balancing the momentum fluxes in the and out the, the phonon system. And if you look at this, you observe immediately what is uh, interesting here is that this uh, effective velocity is first proportional to the velocity of the drop, so basically to the fluid. And then since this moment, Momentum flux is, is or this transfer of momentum is mediated by Stokes forces and friction of fluid at the solid. You observe that rougher is the surface, rough and higher is the friction force. So, and this is this parameter W that we introduced here. So basically, assume that more a subset is rough, more the friction is important. So highly and easier you can uh, transfer momentum with uh, with uh, between the, the liquid and the solid. So. Seems to be all in a quite a good, uh, I mean, at least a qualitative agreement between the experiment and the result. But the question is, would, would it be possible to, to test it more in the, the details? And if you look at that, is that basically there was still another parameter that we can uh, play, is that here we didn't speak right now so far about this, but it's basically on this density of states. So the question is, is there a, tune, a way to tune a density of states of a number of, of of these things, and the best way to do it is basically introducing an external parameter is basically gating. So add a voltage gate, and if you, then you have to know exactly what is the bond structure of your surface or your system, but basically you, we know that, okay, we are using multilayer graphene, so multilayer graphene can be approximated quite fine with uh, a graphite with two double parameters that are touching because they are not exactly uncoupled in case in graphene. And in this sense, you observe that uh, you expect to have 
a direct linear transfer. So basically what we are here with the experiment, we, we perform this um, measurement again with, uh, as a function of the gate. So we perform between, okay, we change from 40 millivolt down to minus 40 millivolts, we change. And what we observe is that we, we see that the, 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 this gate has a direct impact on this electronic current. So you decrease the gate, you decrease the current that you measure, and when you inverse the sign of this, uh, of this, uh, um, of the gate, you switch, you change the, the the sign of the current. So basically, you go in a position of in phase opposition. So this basically it means that you are moving from a region where of reconfiguration where the electrons are the mere carriers to the uh, to a configuration where there are holes to the mere carriers. And here we observe this uh, the conductivity as a function of the bias. We see there is no. Uh, no discontinuity, but basically we, we go continuously from a positive to negative current. That is basically means that there is no band gap opening in, the, in our system. It's quite understandable. So at the end, altogether, this, uh, um, this result convinced us that we have been able to, to observe this phonon drug and this electron generation. And just to conclude, so we we are now quite convinced that fluid electron in interaction impact the transport in carbon material when you look at the fluid transport. But also the vice versa, you have the opposite effect. So with, where you have this interaction can also be translated in, uh, in generation of uh, electronic current induced by a, a flow of a liquid. And all comes from this uh, strong interaction that is basically the strong uh, fluid solid friction at the, at the interface. And then now we can also start to look or hope to control the fluid solid friction by tuning the matching between the collective response of molecules in the liquid and those of the electrons in the, in the solid. So this is more or less what we would like to do right now, but it's going to be take us a bit of time. And to do so I can uh, finish here. I thank you all for this, uh, well, for your attention. I thank you for this opportunity for the, and the pleasure to be here all together again. And I'm ready for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, other questions? Erio. Thank you very much. Uh, um, just, just, so what about the famous logarithmic? You have linear response, right? In our uh, case, we have li linear response. We expect that in our case was, uh, we were basically dominant. We were a very high viscous liquid and with uh, ra quite a rough material. So in our case, we were completely dominated by sort of mesoscale friction. So we were not able to, to enter in what you observed in, um, in if it logarithmic, it cannot, cannot be anything else than basically stick slip in a certain way. Or it's very hard to understand that they're the same thing. We do not because we, were, we chose to be in a sort of a intermediate regime where Mesos, where viscous flow is, uh, is, uh, is the dominant fact, and basically you're just smoothening everything and you do not see stick slip. Yeah. Yeah, that's also that's true. Can I, can I ask about the, the first, but the flow into the carbon yeah. nanotubes? What type of tubes were they? You, you just said nanotubes. Was we, we are using for carbon nanotube and boron nitrate. So carbon nanotube are very slippery. And boron nitrate. Yeah, but the, but the nano carbon nanotubes are multi wall or. Multi wall, sorry, yeah. Okay, absolutely. okay. Because, because if you look, look at the electronic structure, if you have single wall tubes, you could actually realize um, semiconducting and, uh, and sort yes, of. Yes, and metallic. that is uh, exactly what is, for example, and um, we are like, currently discussing with this, and we have some results with, uh, with, with the Ming Mai exactly on about what happened when you go and you go with the double wall nanotubes in particular, and exactly what it seems that. More you go with uh, small number, normal number of wall, and more this effect is even more important because then you can also have a, observe this, the coupling between the different uh, walls, and basically you can op end up with a stronger dependency on the on the on electronic with the radius of the, of the properties. So at the end, we would expect that if you were able to measure single wall or double wall, you'd even be able to observe larger uh, or larger slip and lower friction. Okay, one final question. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the nice presentation. Uh, you had a slide uh, where you compared in uh, Coulomb drag versus phonon dispersion, I think. Yeah. Uh, could you give some idea how um, these two are compared together? Uh, I mean, uh, in which system, which one is dominant? This is, uh, okay. 
they play it all together, the, they are, the two are together in a certain way. It depends in, uh, for example, if you consider purely graphene, perfect graphene where the, I mean, the, if you look here, for example, in the phonon drug, you have different, if, if it goes, there are different parameters that enter in, in, in a game. So if you have completely flat and the, the, the friction force can be low, you end up being less sensitive to phonon drug and more sensitive to, to Coulomb drug. Also, if you are in a perfect graphene where the, the effective mass of the charge carrier is lower, then you're gonna be more sensitive to the Coulomb drug. The two are playing together, but, but let's say, is more efficient Coulomb drug, I mean, phonon drug can be more, way more efficient than Coulomb drug, but you need to be in a configuration where the friction force is very high. If you are perfectly slippery, for example, I would expect that you would have, in the other hand, a very large Coulomb drug. Okay, thank you. So sure. we, now, we now come, uh, thanks again. So. We now come to the, f to the final talk.